Okay, day five, Rockford Film Festival 2024. I'm here with some filmmakers of uh, behind Once and For Real, a uh, German feature film that we've just seen here. Do you want to just introduce yourself and your role in the film? Start with yourself. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Holger Borgräfer. I co-wrote the film, co-produced it and directed it. And my name is uh, Sebastian Schwarz and I'm the producer. Thank you very much for joining us and submitting your film and coming from Germany. You're very welcome. As a co-writer then, Holger, can you just tell us where the idea came from and also how you collaborated with your co-writer, please? <laughs> from my love life. Right. <laughs> so is it, based, is it based on true? I don't no, I mean, it's, it's like partially. It's like, always like, I mean, if you make a film like that, I mean, the best thing you can relate to is your own experience or the feeling with your own experience. Therefore, yeah. um, I think you have this episode one and I, I remember that, that a girl I really had, had a crush on told me once, my God, I was at this party and they, they said, I am a slut. Am I a slut? And I said, no, 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 definitely not. No, because I mean, there, there was my boyfriend and um, there was a really nice guy and I started dancing with him really tightly. And, but I'm not slut. And I said, yeah, it's okay. And that was the beginning of, a, uh, of one of the worst stories of my life. Right. Um, <laughs> and the inspiration for the first uh, love of Anton. Okay. Yeah. So the ones that, um, was there any that weren't based at all on your own experiences? What is it? Were there any episodes uh, that weren't based that you made up? Yes, there are episodes, but it's always like that. I mm. think the second one was not like that. Mm. Um, there were sometimes characters were sort of um, influenced partially by, by, by people I knew mm. and or I know, and but there's always something else because when you write this, these people start walking. And I had this wonderful co-writer. Elena Janssen, who actually made a A levels in 2001 when the whole thing started, and therefore okay. she took her experience also. Yeah. And I think what's most important that this film, which is about this guy who, who fails in his love life, partially, partially yes, partially, partially not, and is always saying maybe and start, uh, instead of committing himself, yeah. what we all know, I think. Okay. <laughs> what we all know. Um, uh, and, but, but it was good because she took her experience and she sort of uh, put on um, this sort of women's perspective on it. Uh, I, had a, I had a really good editor too who came onto the project before we finished filming and he said, ah, oh, there might be something which is interesting. And she said like, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's try to, to make the women talk about Anton and not having and they have a voiceover, and, and this, this idea from the editor, she, she, she took on and it, it worked really well. And uh, I love working with her because she's always this, this kind of person you, you like to get into a flow mm. with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Sebastian, when do you, as a producer, when do you come on board? And for this film, what uh, was your main responsibilities? So, um, we have to mention that this, the special thing about this movie is that it was produced as a part of a seminar. Okay. So, um, the seminar we provide um, is, is for unemployed, temporarily unemployed filmmakers, young filmmakers, okay. people who want to try new jobs. And, and actors too. Yeah. And actors too. And they, come, they can come to our institute, mm -hmm. especially in the winter, in winter months where there are no that many productions, not that many film productions. Um, and they get some teachings from professionals from the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end, they do a, pro a practic pro practical project, yep. which is this movie. Okay. And they can work there in a mostly higher position than they used to. So when they used to work as assistants, they can there try out the head of position. Okay. Um, W still with guidance, but not that many risks, not that many responsibilities. Mm. So, um, long short, uh, story short, um, my role is that I organize the whole teachings, the whole lessons, the whole seminar, and uh, at the end was the production man manager on set. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, this film looks really, really great. And, and you don't have to tell us what the budget is, but how did you go about raising the money? 
to make this film? Because they, they, they brought in money for, for the courses, uh, which was which is a bit funded by, by, by the employment office, and uh, that was it. That was the money we had. And, and we also sort of had key, po uh, key positions where we had professionals. I'm, I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I had a young cameraman who was wonderful. Felix Janssen, he did what, what a job he did. He was, yes. was 25 when he started shooting, then he had two parts of film, and when he okay. finished with 26, that, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that was about it. And, and, and the people who worked for us doing costume design, uh, and so on. They they brought in their experience and uh, also had some guidance, and they, they did a good job. It yeah. was really, and, and they were. I think they liked the story and, and to try to get into everything into that. And yeah, it's a really really high quality production. So well done to both. Um, so casting the your leads are they from? Oh, actually, should ask. Where is the training place? Where is it based? Just Munich, here. Munich, Germany, okay. Munich. Yeah. And what's the name of it? Theater Werk München. I think it's like Theater Workplace Munich. Okay. Yeah. To the point. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's some kind of you can call it art art school art club. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With further education, we also train actors. We do showreels with actors. We do uh, train uh, opera singers and actors. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's a really great place. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the casting of the leads are they from that place, or did you go elsewhere to get your lead characters? Uh, most of them are from Munich, but uh, actually uh, the lead actor, um, uh, Tilman Eckhart, uh, he is from Dresden. He's from Dresden, and uh, I had this feeling like I wanted to cast somebody like in between me and Robert Redford, and I think it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you always end up, up, up sort of, <laughs> you always end up doing things like that. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and, and some of the actors were casted and some were yeah. part of the seminar, mm -hmm. yeah. completely mixed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Manuel Leuchtenberg, he, he was just out of school uh, for, his, for his first studies, that it was the, um, Moritz, uh, the dark -head guy, I think he also did a wonderful job. Um, yeah, and that was, that was a two of them, that was really quite, quite clear and uh, other, other people, he, he also, he asked some of the female characters to get parts, uh, to, to get these parts, uh, some of them are new, mm -hmm. some of them have been in, in, in other courses of mine I did before, yeah. Are there any uh, questions in the audience at this point? Raise your hand. Yep, someone wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's straight. There you go. Yeah. No. Um, no. Really great film. It's fantastic. Um, as you said, Anton had a lot of positive experiences and a lot of not so positive experiences. I really love the soundtrack in the film. Mm. Very, it felt very positive and uplifting. Was that a conscious decision or did David Shaw, who did the soundtrack, um, I think that's a good, great artistic distribution because it was already also made with little money and said he wants to have handmade music um, to give this main character uh, an additional soul. Because he always wants that, he's always like uplifting and, and wants the best. And this is something, this is the music which also tries to get these tragic parts done and yeah, lots of, lots of air, lots of real instruments, that was it, yeah. There was another two hands I saw. Yep, thank you. Hi, um, Dr. Fidish Jensen, thank you for the nice movie. Um, is this seminar connected to the Bundesagentur for Arbeit to the um, Job Center? Yes, yeah, yeah. So I assume that yeah. And in connection to that, do you also teach um, stage combat or film combat fighting for film? And if not, is that something you would be interested in? What, like good, good, good idea. Um, <laughs> we didn't do that. Because I'm free if you <laughs> <we> want <walk along>. to. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Just give me. Are you Munich based? Uh, no, I'm based here, but I also have a base in Berlin. Okay. So yeah, that's lovely. Just I'm, I'm happy to travel. <laughs> Let's change contacts. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent networking, by the way, Paul. Who else had their hand up? Uh, at the back there, maybe. 
Thank you. Hi. It was really interesting watching you go about how a group of like really simple concepts sort of came together. That was really interesting to watch. And um, how did you? How, how was it a challenge to kind of like make the characters look older and try and like make it look like it was in a different era? Um, shall I? Yeah. Uh, uh, we had this sort of chief makeup art the artist, Uncle Loibel, and she was like looking at the characters and thinking of what, what might work. And, and giving Anton a beard was something which, which worked for him and which made him older and, and also sort of giving him acting decisions, say, when you're about 40 years old, just think that you might walk differently, um, try to put, I don't know, stones in your shoes or think of like putting stones in your shoes. It was really like uh, the, the guys from the costume came just giving him really thick shoes for the last episode to, to make him walk differently. Excellent. Did you, did you kind of have to film out of sequence or was it filmed mostly chronologically? How, how did you go about that? I just wanted to jump in there because production, from a production point of view, it was complete horror. Mm. Because we had, uh, yeah, things like, especially the beard, uh, we had to plan every day when can we do the shooting with the beard, when it has to has it to be done. Um, so it was complete horror planning all these episodes, all these different makeups. Um, we did with the hair st stuff with the hair. Um, yeah, horror for playing, yeah. Yeah, and great because I think that there was a scene where he had all these different dates and during the scene his, his um, a beer, beard grew. Yeah. His beard grew, but of course we had to, 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 to shoot it differently. We had to shoot the last thing first when he got shaved and then we, okay, that was, yeah, that was the planning and, uh, yeah. And, uh, and the other thing is that, um, first three episodes were done in 2022 and the fourth episode was done in 2023 with a different uh, seminar, with a different workshop, with different people and uh, keeping continuity was very exhausting. Yeah, asking, asking for, the, for the costume of, uh, of his partner because you always wear it with the same costume and then it was really like... Uh, the costume designer kept it up. Oh my God, you're filming in two, you're filming in a week, but I've got it in Austria. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to get it on time. But yeah, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was not easy. I must say, it was not easy. I would not normally. I would not recommend shooting this as a low budget, low low budget movie. But okay, but it was a challenge. It was a real challenge mm -hmm. also for the people who worked on it. And, and you, it's really like I me. Mean, okay, what did you achieve as a producer? <laughs> Because it's really like what what this man uh, made. High blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but most of it seemed to have worked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done. I just got to look at it. I'm just like, how on earth would you manage something like that? But very well done to you. Yeah. It, it worked really well. It's, the problems surrounding it didn't show. It actually flowed really well. I thought in the end. Good point. Yeah. Last question from me. Um, what's your hopes? We need to wrap there. What's your hopes for the film going forwards? What do you are you going to try and sell it or go to other festivals? What's your plan? For this kind of film, you need a festival circuit with, with, with different festivals. That's definitely important. We had another project uh, two or three years ago um, that got a VOD a distribution worldwide. We hope we get that again. But you never know, that's interesting. You're always like, when you're sitting here, it's like, does it work? It's, it's, because I don't know it's going to be with, there with 100 copies in the theater. It's always like that, you're on the festivals to see, ah, might, might be appealing, might be not. But uh, thank you for the reaction. Yeah, I think it's a great film. We all really enjoyed it in the selections team. And yeah, I think you all just definitely enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for coming, both of you. Can we have a round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.